Hey everybody, it's Simon from Lake Hub, and I'm a happy man because I just fixed my power problem. So relieved! I replaced my power converter, and now my battery, which I thought was toast, is charged, and the lights work, and everything works. Oh my gosh, I'm a happy man. So here's what happened, here are the symptoms. First of all, my battery died. Okay, time for a new battery. Put a new battery. It died. Okay, did I get a bad battery? No, turns out the power converter was bad. What led me to believe, to believe that and to start investigating that and learning about that because I had no idea how these things work. What led me to that was this high pitched squeal when this circuit breaker was on. So th this one was on, um, we could run our air conditioning and that's it. This one was on, high pitched squeal, nothing worked. Start looking into it and that squeal is what a, a dead and dying power converter sounds like. So I learned a lot. Um, huge shout out to some uh, some friends on Facebook in the RV Entrepreneur Facebook group who uh, were kind enough to encourage me to do it yourself um, because this felt like way over my pay grade. I've done a lot of like, you know, wood and mechanical work and stuff on campers, but not electrical. So I had to learn a lot because we're talking about 120 volt and 12 volt and them all working together and playing off each other. So, underneath my dinette seat here is where everything lives. So this is my new unit, this is my old one. Uh, my old one, this is a 30 amp um, setup here, and my old one was an Elixir Model 30. Very fancy name. Elixir is no longer in business. Um, I guess because they made really janky power converters, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, a lot of complaints about them. Um, this one's, I, you know, I didn't look to see if there's like a manufacturer date on it or anything like that, but they were in a lot of factory models, you know, like they, they were used a lot. They were used a lot. So this one might have lasted, you know, 10, 12 years. I don't, I don't actually know. It might have been an aftermarket. I don't really know. They were used a lot. Can't buy them anymore. So um, had to, number one, find a replacement model. So shout out to bestconverters.com, bestconverter.com, bestconverters, I think it's bestconverters.com, um, because they have like a little wizard that helps you pick out if you had an Elixir, this model, and, and you're running this type of circuit, then you need to pick from, you know, either this one or this one. So that was the only place online I found that actually had any helpful information for what model to pick. Um, so bought from them, had to buy the circuit breakers separately, but they were like add-on, you know, it was pretty easy to check out and stuff. Um, with shipping and everything, it was about 200 bucks out the door. So, ouch, but um, if, it, if I had to pay an RV tech to do this, you know, it wouldn't have been done for a couple months because there's a shortage and my estimate probably in the 500 to $600 range. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad I did it myself all in all. I was freaked out. I mean, I, this box has been sitting in here for a couple months. Um, been waiting for a non hot day when we're camping to try and fix it with power and tools and all that kind of stuff. So kind of like waiting for the perfect scenario to try and fix it because if I screwed it up, I was afraid we'd have no air conditioning and then... Whew. So first of all, the reason why um, the circuit breakers are the way they are is because the big one on the left, um, big meaning, um, you know, more amperage, is the main one, that's where 120 comes in. That's your shore, shore power, right? That's that's your your hookups. This is where your hookups come in. And you can see that right here. This is this is my snake right here. So it comes in right here, boom, 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 goes in the bottom. And then if you trace that, 
when you take this panel off, you'll see that it goes right into that first circuit breaker. Then power goes out from that breaker and it goes out to the air conditioner. In this case, in, in my case, it goes out to the air conditioner and then also out to the power converter, which is on this side. Okay. So this is where, this is where all the expensive stuff happens. This is where it goes from 120 volt to 12 volt. And then there's a, there's a circuit board with all the logic and all the gizmos and all the stuff that I don't know anything about. Um, and there's a fan and something else to note about that fan is it's basically a computer fan. It's an, it's a really inexpensive little fan. It's like four screws in a clip. Once you take this panel off four screws and then an electrical clip connector and those are cheap to replace. So, um, one thing to note, if you're having trouble with power, if you notice that everything's like dimming and dimming and dimming and dimming, and then it goes out, um, your power converter might just be overheating. And if it overheats, a lot of them have a built-in safety. This is another something I learned. A lot of them have a built-in safety and they'll shut off. So first of all, make sure that there's plenty, it's in a big enough space. So if there's like, if there was like a, a board or a wall or something right here, that'd be too tight. Um, not enough airflow. It needs three cubic feet of airflow, but this, this right here, I'm not gonna, this box is not gonna live in any, this is my old converter, by the way. That's my instructions for the new one. And all my old nuts and bolts and guts of the old one right here. It's not gonna live there, so there's plenty of airflow around here, so that doesn't happen. But if the fan fails, that could also happen, and that's a really inexpensive upgrade. Um, so that could be something that you do to save an older unit. Um, Always work cheapest to most expensive, right? Cheap and easy to expensive and complicated. So check your fuses. Those are super cheap. Um, you know, like a buck a piece or something like that. Then check your circuit breakers. Those are like 10 bucks. Fan, fan's gonna be in here. That's gonna be like 20 bucks. And then if you have to replace the whole dang thing, which is going to be in my case, $200. But if you are talking about like a massive rig, 50 amp and all that kind of stuff, really complicated, lots of circuits going on, probably a lot more. Don't exactly know how much, but I don't have to worry about that because we ride in a little rig. Okay. So, uh, anyway, the power goes to the converter and then it goes back to this circuit. So this is a, this is the 12 volt circuit. Then that goes out into all these right here. It goes to the, goes to the fuse panel. Okay. You can see your fuses right there yonder. And then it goes out to all the different circuits. These little fellows right here. So these then go out to power all the different widgets in the camper. So that's going to power, um, the lights, you know, the, my exhaust fan, um, all that kind of stuff. The, you know, the propane, the propane detector, propane leak detectors tied into that, that system. Um, what else? I think that's it. I think mm, there's the fridge. I think the fridge might run off a 12 volt. I don't even know, honestly. Um, haven't haven't really gotten that far. I just connected, took the old circuits and then kind of matched them all up and, and connected new ones. And what's cool about this one is our old one had, um, it only had three circuits. This one has seven. So this last fuse right here is just, an, that's just a spare. I have three, is that right? Oh, my last one had four and this one has seven. So I have three spares right here. So I'm thinking about putting um, a little USB, you know, they make like a little 12 volt USB charger. Um, putting that one right here. Why not? Right. That'd be kind of a cool, handy, handy dandy little, little addition um, to be able to charge all our devices and stuff. I and mean, this is a 2008 camper. So it came out. Uh, let's see. The iPhone had been out, what, a couple years, two years, maybe. <laughs> so. Um, uh, yeah, no USB ports in this camper. That would be an aftermarket addition. 
Uh, they, they also make like a little panel that has a couple USB ports and your battery, uh, battery voltmeter. So it, a little digital display that, that has uh, how many volts are going on in your battery. So you can tell whether your battery's dead or not, which is super handy. If you put that within eye shot, I'm thinking about putting it right here, put it within eye shot of the door, then you can just glance in and check, you know, before the campers popped up. Um, what would probably be best is to put it on this wall right here. That way it's right next to the door. And this is like a nice little counter to rest all our phones on and stuff. Anyway, we have our, when everything's popped up and proper, not like me working in it, we have our shoe rack, handy dandy shoe rack that hangs there. I had a video about that. Um, that is like the easiest, cheapest, most handy pop-up uh, DIY hack, you know, addition or whatever that you can possibly do. It's so handy. Um, so that would be the right way to do it, but I'd have to go down underneath the camper, back up. I don't know, maybe I'll do it. That's that's probably the right right place to put it. So I'm actually kind of excited. Like I can add like accessories and stuff now. Uh, there was a little bit of woodwork involved. Um, I had to, the, the, the shape was slightly different. And so I had to cut away some of this. I had to get a circular saw and kind of eyeball it. It's a real hack job, but you know, unless somebody's down here on their hands and knees and looking up, they're never going to see it. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, one, one other thing to note, if you have a progressive dynamics power converter, like I do, um, after I get it all installed, I was still kind of like, I hope cross my fingers. Like, I hope this works right. And I noticed on the back, it said visit our website for more warranty information, return instructions. I was like, okay, I'm just going to I'm just gonna check their website, just to be sure. Found found my, there's like a documentation, like um, instruction manuals and documentation and FAQs um, search deal. You put your you put your number in there. I have a PD4100 and, um, and it had the instruction manual and a PDF. And I opened that up just to make sure that that was the same as what I have, which is it, it is four pages. And I was like, okay, cool. Then they also had an addendum to the instruction manual, which I've never seen that before. <laughs> Thought, I better take a look at this. The addendum says in like red letters at the top, ignore everything on page one in your instruction manuals. Okay, started to sweat a little bit because page one is all of the important stuff. Um, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully it didn't affect my project at all. Um, the addendum just did a better job of explaining what's going on in here. And that's everything basically what I just shared with you, like how, how the power is going in on this side, it's going to the converter in there and all that kind of stuff. The addendum explained that very well. Um, so if you have a progress progressive dynamics power converter, yeah, go ahead and check their website before you start working. <laughs> that was, that was a little bit of like, Hey guys, uh, would have been helpful, but thankfully didn't actually affect me at all so there you go i now have power if you're having power problems hope this helps you out if not at least you found it interesting and you'll know what to do if you have problems in the future i'm simon from lake i mean we'll catch you next time